Hi, I'm Matt Vaughan from Donald Insaw Associates. Uh, we're a specialist conservation architect uh, based in uh, Birmingham. I lead the Birmingham office. Uh, we have eight offices across the UK. Um, our London office uh, recently completed work at the Temperate House in Kew Gardens, which is a £40 million project. Um, and we've been involved uh, with the Botanical Gardens for, I think, a little over six years, um, doing historic studies, um, carrying out repair projects such as the chimney. And our next project for the Botanical Gardens is going to be carrying out repairs with Reynolds Conservation and uh, PMP consultants um, to this bandstand that you see behind me. The bandstand was completed in 1873 uh, and was designed by F.B. Osborne, who was also the designer of the Palm House. Uh, the gardens themselves were designed by John Loudon um, and completed in 1832. Um, but since 1873, the bandstand's been a real focal point for the gardens, both visually and part of its life, being used for performances of bands, but also famous speeches by uh, figures such as Neville Chamberlain. Um, now, the bandstand was adapted early in the 20th century um, with these sound screens that have been added and these glass screens are designed to reflect sound back to the band so that they can hear themselves playing properly. Um, and there was a major phase of restoration that was carried out and completed in 1973, which is when these steps at the front were added. One of the major things that we're going to be doing is uh, removing um, this brick plinth at the front, which was actually a later addition in 1973. And what we're going to be doing is constructing some steps. And that's because once you enter the botanical gardens, you leave the palm houses, the first thing you see is the bandstand and your natural inclination is to walk towards it. But at the moment, you can't get onto the bandstand. So we're going to be building some new steps at the front and that's going to involve some new cast iron components creating balustrades so that it's very much sympathetic to the historic design. It's going to be repairing some of the brickwork, so repointing it and repairing some of these grills. There's a basement underneath which was used as an air raid shelter during World War II. Um, so we've got to do some structural repairs there where we've got steel work that's decaying. Um, and that's going to involve relaying the brick floor which is over the, the top of the bandstand. Um, other things we're going to be doing is repairing the joinery, so the sound screens and replacing the glass which at the moment is just annealed glass um, so it doesn't break safely so if anyone does lean on it or falls into it then their arm will go through it and it's obviously a risk of health and safety to the public. We're going to be recovering the roof with slate, at the moment they're asbestos cement slate um, so it'll be relayed with Welsh slate as it was historically. Probably one of the most interesting areas of the repairs is going to actually be and repair of the ironwork and decoration, which we'll talk to uh, Reynolds about in a bit more detail in a moment. And a major exercise uh, when we were planning this work was doing historic paint research by Ian Crick Smith. Um, and what they did is uh, did analysis of all different areas of the paintwork to understand what the historic scheme of decoration was. So if you think about the, uh, the capitals um, and the green uh, spandrel panels, the columns, these barley twist columns, um, the uh, cast iron um, um, panelling here, all of these would have been different colours historically and what Ian did was take a, a slice through the paint layers in all these different areas and under a microscope identify all of the different layers of paint. So there's probably about 12 different layers of paint in each area going down through different colours and you can see where it's been repainted as tastes have changed over the years. Um, so it's white and dark green at the moment and I think it's probably been like that for at least 20 years. But right at the bottom you can see all of the dark red uh, lead paint and really dark green lead paint that was favoured by the Victorians. Um, so we've done that research and we're now putting together the historic colour scheme. And it's kind of like detective work because some of the areas when they were replaced, like some of the areas at the top the, and some of these aluminium components, there is, there's either no history of paint um, where the component's been lost or the paint was completely stripped off when it was repainted so we don't know what the colour of decoration is there. So we then have to generate new colour schemes which imagine what the colour scheme might have been. Also using some of the black and white photos which are of some use but limited use for obvious reasons. But we can use those to try and build up what the colour scheme was and we can restore that then uh, using modern paint systems. Um, 
lead paint is still used in some contexts, but it obviously has health and safety risks. So it, in this instance, we'll be using a modern oil paint.